Local support for New Six has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. Hi, I'm Gabe Seibert from Immaculate Conception. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Angie Pusateri. In the modern world where everything's made by machine, handcrafted designs come as a pleasant surprise. Michael Pluckhorn talks about his hobby in blacksmithing and actually shows us how it's done. Hi, my name is Michael Ian Pluckhorn and I'm here interviewing my dad about blacksmithing. How did you get started in the craft of blacksmithing? Well, I needed to make a fireplace poker one day, and um, I thought if I got uh, a piece of uh, iron hot enough, I'd be able to bend it and put a handle on it, and that pretty much created the start of what I do as a hobby. Could you tell us the unique history behind this craft? Well, blacksmithing is as, as old as time, just about, when they were able to extract ore from the ground and uh, uh, fashion tools and unfortunately weapons. Um, some of the, in the medieval times, a lot of uh, the townspeople thought that uh, the, the blacksmith crafters were, had an evil intent because they worked in very dim light. And uh, the reason for that was so they could see the temperature of the steel and, uh, and when to forge it. What type of designs do you make? Michael A. and I make all different kinds of designs. Uh, one of the, uh, the reasons I do this is my wife really likes this particular um, wrought iron. Uh, candlestick holders, lamps, uh, a lot of outdoor type stuff, plant hangers, hooks. What makes this craft so special? Never two designs come out the same. That's what's so unique in my eyes about blacksmithing. Uh, with the world that is today where everything comes out exactly the same, uh, I think it's a breath of fresh air. Today's News 6 is produced by Immaculate Conception. Our school is in Port Clinton, which is 35 miles northeast of Bowling Green. Port Clinton was founded in 1828 and has a population of 7,106. Have you ever wondered what happens if you dial 911? In our next story, we look at the important role that this number plays in various emergencies. Hi, my name is Kathy Gagnon, and have you ever had to call 911 in case of an emergency? Well, we're here at the Ottawa County 911 Center to find out what it's all about. What is 911, and how did they get started? 911 is a national emergency number that is used in a lot of different areas. It makes it easier access to get an emergency call through to the proper people. When a 911 operator receives a call, what do they do? We receive the call and we determine whether it's a police, fire, or ambulance emergency. At that point, if instructions are needed, we can give instructions over the phone for a choking baby or CPR or different things like that to actually help the caller help the patient before the emergency people can get on scene. What should people remember if they call 911? Remember that 911 is an emergency number. It is to be used only in emergencies. And it is helpful for the dispatcher if the caller stayed relatively calm so that we can get the proper information from them. How do you cope with such a stressful job? Well, I enjoy what I do, and it's all about helping people. So that helps me cope with, with what we have to do here. Thank you, James Lucas, for the great interview. Have have you ever been hungry in the middle of a class and dreamt about the delicious things that you could be eating? 
Well, this week's Kids View question asks the sixth graders, what is your favorite food and why? Hi, this week's Kids View question is, what's your most favorite food and why? Hi, my favorite food is chicken nuggets because I like the chicken inside. Hi, my most favorite food is tacos because I like the taste. Hi, my most favorite food is macaroni and cheese because I like the cheese. Do you know a place where soldiers and civilians match their skills? Camp Perry is such a place where military shooting teams compete with people from all over the world in the national matches. Hi, I'm Shannon McDonough, and I'm here at Camp Perry Training Site interviewing Major Dean Brown. What's the primary function of Camp Perry? Provide small arms training and uh, other type of training facilities for Army National Guard soldiers like uh, nuclear, biological, and chemical training, driver's training, and other classroom type training activities. Which armed services use Camp Perry? Our biggest user is the Army National Guard. But we're also a large uh, provider of services to the United States Coast Guard because of our 53 square miles of impact area in, in the Great Lakes. We also provide services to the United States Navy, uh, the United States Naval Reserve, Marine Corps Reserve, and also a big user of the Department of Army, which sponsors the national matches. What services does Camp Perry provide here in the area? Well, we provide a lot of services. Uh, we, we have facilities on post for civilian use, cottages and cabins, white sandy beaches, we have recreational areas that is used by the community and also we provide a lot of support to local shooting clubs to support the uh, national matches in the summertime. I heard that Camp Perry has a special relationship with young people. Well, we're really large in the uh, Boy Scout and Girl Scout program, hosting hundreds of uh, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts each year. We also sponsor on a daily basis a youth offenders program where a troubled youth out of Maumee uh, Correctional Institute has a chance to come to Camp Perry and are given mentorship by our uh, craftsmen on post and learn skills that they can take back into their community after their, uh, after their time is done at Maumee. Thank you, Major Dean Brown, for telling us about the different activities in Camp Perry. This week in Critics Corner, sixth graders from Immaculate Conception selected Nowhere and Back by Margaret J. Anderson. This book is about a girl named Elizabeth who moves into a new home where she meets a girl named Anne. Anne belongs to the past and Elizabeth can live Anne's life without the passing of time. This is the greatest book and you should read it. That's all for this week's show. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in next week when the 6th grade class of Salina East Elementary visits News 6. Local support for New Six has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.